Three summers ago, I was in the midst of my dating adventures. I was 25 years old and had been on plenty of dates, some of which turned out to be quite foolish. But this one particular date still stands out in my mind. It all started on the dating app, Plenty of Fish. I stumbled upon a profile of a guy who caught my eye. He was physically attractive in a nerdy sort of way. And his profile photos were filled with exciting adventures of hiking and traveling. I was intrigued and wanted to get to know him more. Soon enough, he noticed that I had viewed his profile and sent me a message. We hit it off right away and started flirting back and forth through the app. Before I knew it, we exchanged numbers and continued the conversation. Although he lived about an hour away, he was up front and told me that he had never been to my city and didn't plan on visiting anytime soon. I appreciated his honesty, and I didn't want to waste my time on someone who wasn't interested in meeting. One day, shortly after meeting him online, he texted me out of nowhere, saying he was in town for work and wanted to meet up, and invited me to a bar he was at. He even offered to pick me up, which I thought was sweet, but in retrospect, maybe not the smartest move on my part. Anyway, I was nearby and thought, why not? Let's do this. So I agreed to meet him, but it took him forever to get to me, like seriously way longer than it should have. To be honest, I don't even think he was ever actually at the bar, but I was all dressed up and ready to go. So I figured I might as well see how it goes. And well, it wasn't the most exciting evening of my life. I think I was just excited at the prospect of meeting someone new and going out. Looking back, I realize now that maybe I should have been a little more cautious. I mean, it's not the safest thing in the world to meet up with someone you've only talked to online. As soon as I hopped into my POF date's car, I couldn't help but notice that it was a rental. And from the way he was driving, it seemed like he had just gotten his license. He was swerving all over the road, making me feel uneasy. After driving in circles for a bit, he asked me to pick a place to go as the bar he was at wasn't good, but not in the area because parking was impossible. I thought for a moment and chose a place that was about 15 minutes away by car. It had plenty of parking, but also a busy and lively atmosphere, which made me feel a bit more comfortable since I was with the stranger. Once we arrived at the bar, he started to pressure me to drink. He insisted on buying me a drink and seemed really pushy about it. I'm not a big drinker, but I do enjoy a good pub style bar. So I caved and had one drink. I was again pressured to have another one. My date became more and more pushy and seemed irritated that I wasn't drinking more. Usually, I would have ended the date right there if someone was treating me poorly, but he was charming enough that I decided to stick around until we finished our date. As we sat at the bar, I noticed an old acquaintance of mine and I wanted my date to know that I knew this person. I think, deep down, I wanted him to know that someone could identify him if anything went wrong. I'm not a paranoid person, but I think my subconscious was on high alert. After chatting for an hour at the bar, I told him that I was ready to head out. However, he had other plans and suggested we go across the street for coffee. I was a bit confused, as neither of us had consumed much alcohol and didn't feel the need to sober up. Nevertheless, I went along with it. As we sipped on our drinks, he revealed that he had rented a stunning Airbnb in a nearby neighborhood that is more out of the city. He raved about how serene and tranquil it was, and how he had the entire place to himself. He then extended an invitation to me, offering a glimpse into the beauty of the countryside. I tried to politely decline his offer, but he was persistent, countering my every excuse with a compelling reason for me to join him. I had no intention of actually going with him, but I agreed to go only if he drove me home to grab some overnight essentials. I couldn't say no as he seemed determined and I didn't want to disappoint him. He was elated with my answer and we set off on our journey. During the drive, he suddenly announced that he was going to stop at a 7-Eleven to buy me some travel-sized toiletries so I wouldn't have to bring anything with me. I felt a wave of panic wash over me as my plan was not to go with him in the first place. There was something unsettling about him that made me regret getting back into the car. Before I knew it, we were driving into the countryside further and further away from civilization. I couldn't help but notice that there were no 7-Elevens or open stores in sight. 
that's when I realized that my gut was telling me to get out of there. So I gathered my courage and told him that I was actually thinking I'd prefer not to stay with him. I asked him to take me home. He then said something that made me completely nervous to be around him for much longer. He said he's sharing the Airbnb with the owners and said they are really fun and sweet and that they drink and play games together. He originally said he had it all to himself. I knew I didn't want to make it obvious that I was catching up on his lie. So I went along with it and said, oh, I have to wear my cute fluffy overnight PJs instead of my date dress because I'll be way more comfy. Then I spewed off a few other things. I mentioned that I need my medication and absolutely can't miss a dose. Surprisingly, he turned around and as we drove back into the city, I felt a bit more calm, but at that point, not safe. Finally, we got close to my place. I had no intention of letting him get close enough to know where I live. He was mentioning that he was going to come up to my apartment once we got there, and that was just a huge hell no. I didn't know what I would do, but I looked for any opportunity to get out of the situation knowing he could turn around and take me somewhere private in the matter of 15 minutes if he wanted. We got to a stop sign where people were crossing, thank God. I quickly but calmly got out and said, hey, you know, I think I have a headache, I'll text you. I closed the car door and went through a public park which was beside a building that his car wouldn't be able to drive into. I looked back to make sure he wasn't getting out of his car or following and I could see him staring at me. He was so furious, I have chills thinking about it. Within the hour, he had me blocked on POF. Looking back, I think he possibly wanted to get me a coffee to possibly put something in it. I suspect he told me on POF that we wouldn't meet in person as a way to protect himself and I know he did not have good intentions with me. Since then, I have met my fiance on POF and was super careful about dating up until then, making sure the first few dates are very public and to arrange my own transportation. <laughs> At the age of 20, I had yet to experience the joys of a romantic relationship. Growing up as a shy girl in a quaint small town had limited my dating prospects. So, I turned to online dating to find that special someone. Despite numerous matches and conversations, my innate paranoia about meeting someone in person always held me back from asking anyone out on a date. That was until I met Chris. When I first started talking to Chris online, I was skeptical, as I am with most guys I meet on dating apps. This guy was different. He seemed like the total package, you know? He was my age. We both loved the same things and had a hilarious sense of humor. We went from chatting on OkCupid to texting, and then finally, talking on the phone. We chatted on the phone for a whole month, and I learned that not only was he a med student, but he also had his own IT repair shop and apartment. I was pretty impressed if I'm being honest. After a month of chatting, Chris finally convinced me to meet up in person. For our first date, we arranged to meet for lunch in the food court of a mall, then go see a movie. I didn't tell my friends or family where I was going because I was embarrassed to admit I was going on an OkCupid okay date, so I tried to make our date setting as public as possible. It ended up being one of the best dates of my life. We got so involved in our conversation that we missed the movie and ended up walking around inside the mall till it got dark. He wanted to head out to the parking lot to sit in his car and continue the discussion, but it was getting late and I had to get home, so I passed. I couldn't wait for our next date. I wanted a boyfriend so badly and I couldn't remember the last time I had felt this way about a guy, so I eagerly agreed to plans for our next date. We were going to meet at his apartment for dinner. I naively thought that since I already met him once, I didn't need to worry about telling anyone I'd be out with him that night. After what came next, I never made that mistake again. I was on my way to his place on the evening of our date when he texted me that he was working late at his computer repair shop and I asked if I could meet him there instead. The address he texted for a shop was about two hours away from the address he'd given me for his apartment. but. I was already on the road and I was desperate to make this work, so I didn't mind. The first red flag went off when I arrived. His shop was a tiny one-room building, not far off from a shack. It was on a woodsy residential street outside of town and had no sign. 
Inside the shack, it was even worse. Computer parts were scattered all over the floor, nothing looked client-facing, and the carpet reeked of smoke and weed. He also didn't look like he was working at all. He was sitting with a group of older men who looked to be in their 40s, passing around a pipe. He introduced them as his friends. We hung out with them for about 20 minutes, during which none of them spoke to me or acknowledged me. After passing the pipe around a couple more times, Chris offered to drive me to his apartment. I told him I could drive myself, but he insisted he drive because he only had one parking spot. I reluctantly agreed, reminded myself that our first date went so great, so I could trust him. At first, I couldn't even tell it was an apartment. We had arrived in a parking lot of a small hair salon called Salon True, closed for the night, which had plenty of empty parking spaces. He showed me to a door beneath the salon, which led to the basement of the building. Inside was a medium-sized cement room with nothing but an industrial sink, a pair of weighted dumbbells, a foam mat, and no windows. The only decoration he had was a bobblehead of a character from a show I told him I liked. That looked brand new. I would have considered the idea that maybe he was struggling financially and had lied about everything because he was embarrassed about his financial situation, but then I saw the giant flat screen TV and DV camera up against the wall. He closed the door behind us and I watched helplessly as he closed the abnormal number of locks on it. He must have seen my fear because he quickly assured me that the reason he had so many locks was because the hairdressers upstairs hated him for no reason and had tried to enter his apartment on multiple occasions. At this point, every possible alarm was going off in my head. I was locked in a basement with no car and no one knew where I was. I didn't even know where I was, but there was one thing I could still try. He walked across the room, his back toward me, and bent down to pick up one of his weighted dumbbells. While his back was turned, I pulled my iPhone slightly out of my pocket and booted up a game that had a song that sounded like a ringtone then shoved it back into my pocket. I answered the phone pretending it was my dad and faked that phone conversation like my life depended on it. My dad was mad at me for being out so late and demanded to know where I was. I told him the name of the salon and the name of the town we were in. I made it seem like he knew exactly where Salon True was. He told me to come home immediately or he would come get me. When I hung up, Chris was already unlocking the door. We got in his car and he drove back to the computer shop much faster than before. He dropped me off at my car, apologized, and said he would text me about our next date. I had never been more happy to be back in my own car. A few days later, he hadn't contacted me yet, so I tried calling him for an explanation. His service had been disconnected. Later that day, I told the story to my good friend Eric and tried to bring up Chris's OkCupid okay profile page, but that had been deleted too. However, I was lame, and when we were calling each other regularly, I had his OkCupid okay picture saved on my phone as his contact picture. I showed it to Eric, and he recognized Chris immediately. My friend Eric was a student employee at the IT department in his university who helped other students with computer issues. Eric said Chris would come in frequently to get viruses taken off his laptop, viruses that often looked like they were from really sketchy porn sites, and his name wasn't Chris. Eric was able to use info he had gathered about this guy from the IT department ticketing system to look him up on the school's database. Turns out, he wasn't a med student at all. He was older than he said he was, he had dropped out of school this semester, and since he had to bring his laptop to another student to get it fixed, he clearly did not own an IT computer repair business. I'm glad we never met again. From that day forward, I made sure to always tell someone where I was going and who I was going to meet. I will never make the same mistake again. It was about five years ago, and I was 23 at the time. I had just come out of a really serious relationship that lasted for about a year. That guy was my first love, and the first person I was intimate with. So when things between us ended, and he showed no interest in working things out, I was shattered. I felt like my world had crumbled and I was left picking up the pieces. For a while, I just moped around and made some questionable decisions when it came to my love life. I was feeling pretty low 
at just trying to find ways to numb the pain. But eventually, I realized that this kind of behavior wasn't healthy, and it was time to try dating again. I was ready to open up my heart and give love another shot. So, I connected with this guy named Ben on a dating website, and let me tell you, he was quite the catch. He was a few years older than me, with a background as a former Marine, and had the cutest smile I'd seen in a while. Plus, he was really good at keeping a conversation going. After a few days of chatting online, he asked for my number, and we decided to finally meet in person. I drove over to his place, and when I arrived, I was a bit taken aback. He lived with a few other guys, and let's just say they didn't exactly give off the friendliest vibe. Despite their shady appearances and the less than inviting state of their home, Ben lived in a pretty upscale neighborhood, so I just decided to give it a chance and stick around, ignoring the alarm bells going off in my head. Now, I have to admit, being an inexperienced and naive girl, I was a bit nervous about fitting in with this crowd. But I wanted to keep an open mind and see where things would go. And who knows, maybe I'd end up pleasantly surprised. Once he saw me, he came up to me with a huge grin on his face. Before I could even say hello, he enveloped me in a bear hug and handed me a helmet. What's this for? I asked, a bit bewildered. And that's when he revealed that the real reason for his visit to take me for a ride on his motorcycle. Now. I've never been on a motorcycle before, but I've always been curious about it. And there's something about this guy that just makes me want to say yes to everything he suggests. So before I could talk myself out of it, I took the helmet and hopped on the back of the bike. The street he chose to take me on was known to be a long and winding road that was surrounded by trees and hills. It was the perfect place for a motorcycle ride, but was pretty secluded. It's also important to note that this is the springtime and it's about 5 p.m. when we go on our ride. I didn't realize at the time he had decided to take me on that specific road, so we zoomed off. I could feel the wind in my hair and the sun on my face. It was an incredible feeling, like nothing I'd ever experienced before. I was in awe of the beauty of the landscape and the thrill of the ride. Every twist and turn of the road felt like a new adventure, and I was completely in the moment, enjoying every second. But as we continued driving, I started to get a weird feeling in the pit of my stomach. The road was eerily quiet, with not a single car in sight. It was getting dark too, and I couldn't help but think about how I didn't really know this guy. All these red flags were setting off alarm bells in my head, again, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something just wasn't right. It was like my instincts were telling me to be cautious, and I felt a sense of unease creeping over me. Now I will say that while I made a ton of mistakes within this story, this instance is where I am proud of how I reacted. As my anxiety level skyrocketed, I knew I needed to get out of there. So I mustered up the courage and told him that I needed to head back home. At first, he thought it was a joke and started laughing, asking if I was scared. But I was quick to set the record straight and told him that my parents were expecting me for dinner soon and I didn't want to be late. However, he just kept riding forward. And that's when my mind was flooded with vivid images of worst case scenarios. I kept asking him to turn back, but he wasn't budging. It was like he didn't understand the urgency in my voice. But I kept at it, asking him repeatedly to please, please turn back. And finally, he gave in and we made our way back home. So the next day came and I tried to shake off my uneasy feeling from the first date with Ben. I convinced myself that perhaps I was just being paranoid and he was just a friendly guy. So I agreed to a second date a few days later. We met up at a sports bar for dinner and drinks to watch a hockey game. At first, everything seemed okay, but then I started to feel uncomfortable. Ben had his arm around me the entire time, almost like he was trying to claim me as his own. He was constantly trying to kiss me and was acting extremely possessive. I felt like I was suffocating under his constant attention. And then there was the conversation. All Ben talked about was our future and how he would be such a protective boyfriend since he was a former Marine. I barely knew this guy and he was already talking about our future together. It was too much, too fast. At that moment, 
I knew I had to get away from him, but my car was still at his house, so I was stuck. When we were done and heading home, he insisted that I come inside and hang out for a bit. I decided to walk in and stay for five minutes. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, but things took a turn for the worse as soon as we walked into his room. He immediately shut the door behind us, and I found myself in a very uncomfortable situation. My heart started beating so fast, I could feel all the blood rushing to my head. I tried to make a polite exit, but it was clear that he wasn't going to let me go without a fight. Feeling trapped and not knowing what to do, I quickly came up with a plan to distract him and make a run for it. I told him that I needed a drink and asked him to grab us some glasses. As soon as he stepped out of the room, I seized the opportunity and bolted for the door. I heard him calling after me as I ran to my car, but I did not look back. I quickly started the engine and sped away. I was shaking with adrenaline as I drove away, finally feeling safe and relieved to have escaped. After that night, he tried to ask me to hang out again and I told him that I think it would be best if we just stayed friends. This guy began to relentlessly call me and text me and beg me to see him because he liked me so much. I blocked him. Then he tried to message me on Instagram, so I blocked him there. And then on Facebook and finally on Snapchat. 